will discuss now about kings, kingdoms, and early republic. Now we'll uh, we'll discuss about them step by step. First, we need to know who are the kings. Kings were the rulers. Now, how they used to get the kings? Sometimes, when they started getting their kings, it was completely by chosen from their own tribe, the leader of the tribe. So, a small tribal group they select their own uh, ruler, those who a particular person who can control the tribe, who can take decision, who can protect the tribe. Now, from here, the kings they started spreading their territory. How it happened? Now, it can happen in both the way. Rather, the king, those who uh, can be selected in that way from the gunners or the common people, or he can get it from by uh, by uh, from his father by birth, hereditary. It can be elected. Uh, the king can be uh, selected by these two types. Now, how the king of a small territory it started spreading its kingdom they the at that point of time mostly the power was controlled by the land they occupied and the animals they have under their control so they started the kings now started spreading their territory how they will spread their territory either they need to fight with other uh, rulers and to defeat them and to capture their territory or they have chosen some other way given by the Brahmins or the thinking class of the society. Here some of the cases they find that even without fighting they can capture few of the lands where they can rule easily neither even uh, killing other people causing death for many people what a war usually that, uh, that is responsible for rather doing that they perform many of the sacrifices kind of pujas rituals ashamedha yagna was like that something when a king it started accumulating power in its hand maybe one two three battle he won and after that when he was considered as a powerful king he started considering uh, as a powerful king he performed a sacrifice horse sacrifice yagna they called it as Ashamedha Yagna. Now, what is Ashamedha? Asha means horse. A particular horse was assigned, set free to move whatever, wherever the direction the horse wanted to move. The king's army used to follow that horse. Now, the horse is roaming from one state to another state. Whatever the land the horse will go, uh, that those land will consider as a part of the king's territory. Now we need to think that why the the king of the other state will accept that the other because this is his land, right? Other uh, from other king and the horse entered in his land and started uh, occupying the land. It may not be acceptable for them. So to avoid this type of conflicts that of a direct uh, battle or war. They said that they need not to surrender with uh, entire land. Rather, they will be king as they are um, uh, ruling their own country. They can rule like that. They just need to pay an annual taxes or some tributes to the king who is performing this Ashamedha Yagna and to accept him as overlord, as to avoid the war. So, many of the small kings, they accepted it. Now, such this way, wherever, whatever the land uh, that um, horse used to travel, that was under the control of the, perform, the yagna performing uh, king. And the king, end of the, um, when the horse is back again to his territory, then uh, the king used to sacrifice that horse uh, to the god in a, uh, performing some rituals. And he claimed himself as a very powerful king, as he has done Ashamedha Yagna, and so many kingdoms have accepted him as uh, so many other kings. They accepted him as a overlord. Now, what happened after this? Now, when a king he started conquering other places like that, he made a kingdom. 
it is a group of many territories he started ruling he will start ruling will be the ruler now now he started ruling all these places with help of his own subordinates maybe the local rulers those who were already there he, they started paying him a particular taxes some particular taxes or some annual tribute or in form of other things so raja the king that was he was the central figure of this ritual so whatever the uh, uh, whoever is giving whatever the taxes or gifts or whatever it may come for the kingdom that usually goes for raja or the king he uh, of he must be in a special seat like we know that we have seen this singhasan or that type of a special seat where raja or the king should sit we have seen this the story of rama and mahabharata whatever you have seen you have observed this story actually is showing the time period of this this particular time period actually was showing on these two epics here we have seen that the society was divided into four parts now you can ask me one thing that when the kshatriya raja is a protecting the territory so he is the kshatriya so being a kshatriya why raja is not at the top why the brahmanas brahmins they are at the social structure pyramid if you see brahmins were at the top of the pyramid why it was like that actually the brahmins were the decision giver to the king they were the advisor to the king the kings they always keep a special position for the brahmins as at that point of time they were the thinking pot you can say think pot of the society so what to do how to do when the ashamedha uh, with the right time to perform the ashamedha or when it is the right time to attack some other enemies uh, whether it is uh, good or not these all type of political uh, discussion the king used to get their the, the um, uh, suggestions from the brahmins as they were given a special seat in the society special place in the society so brahmins were given the topmost position in the social pyramid structure there is a reason we have find that mainly the areas of ganga yamuna drain region we have seen that this caste system that flourished very strictly the varna system this is the time society was divided into these four varnas this is called as varna system brahmins were the priests they were strictly bound by their type of occupation they were the priests they are the advisor to the king they were uh, the um, uh, teacher for the uh, priestly class like that that this is a particular time when education was strictly for the top two uh, classes not for others so it was uh, strictly for these two classes and they started the, they started controlling the society in that way so that particular work was given to the priest next we can see the kshatriyas who are the warriors kshatriyas were completely the king and the and his families the kingly class where uh, the uh, this this king who is who has a complete hold on the society and on his own kingdom and he started ruling that entire area so maybe the king the his son his daughter his uh, entire family they were the class of, they were considered as kshatriyas next we are coming to vaishyas vaishyas are the people those who are doing some of the business they can be the trader they can go from one place to another place in search of uh, like they are getting some few trading item from one place and they are selling it to other and they are bringing some other customs and ideas as well as money also from the outside of the kingdom so they are called as vaishyas the rest the entire common people those who are serving these three class they are considered as shudras they are more in number and all women they were considered as sudras they don't have any chance to get any hierarchy in the society because they are only given work to 
perform household chores and to serve these three classes. They don't have any liberty as such. Not even in some of the king uh, uh, king's family also we have seen that. So though we have seen that this Varna system, they have a particular fixed work to do that uh, that's the way it was divided. But it was uh, that later Vedic period, the time of Shyam, Sama, Yajur and Atharva Veda, we have seen that this later Vedic period, it was completely based on birth as uh, if anyone's father and mother, their parents are Brahmin, in that case the son will automatically will be a Brahmin, he belongs to a Brahmin family. And this, be, this uh, classified other, other group of people also in that way. So the family business was fixed. If he is a king, his son must be a king. If he is a trader, his son must be a trader. They don't have any other options to choose for. At the same way, the Shudras also, the craft person or the people, those who are doing some other work in the society to serve these three groups, they don't have any right to uh, climb the ladder of the society. They must be doing the same thing how their forefathers had done. That was the way the social structure was defined. Now, many people... Uh, they uh, did not accept this Varna system as it was laid down by the Brahmins. We have seen uh, often by birth uh, the people, those who got their uh, whatever the occupation they got by birth. From the time of Mahabharata, we have seen people were not ready to accept them, that uh, they must do the same thing, they cannot uh, be the superior. Even the same uh, Brahmin uh, controlled society, that idea was uh, some way crea started creating problem with the kings also. As the king was the ultimate superior leader in the society, as a, he has that wealth, he has that power, he was not, many a time we have seen the kings were not ready to give Bam Brahmins that respect that they were looking for, the Brahmins were looking for. So there are uh, others felt that may, may be every time performing this rituals is not that mandatory. Many kings they found in that way. Some uh, many Brahmins also they, they started performing rituals for their own benefit. Many a, a time in the later Vedic period the sacrifice animals to sacrifice animals uh, to please God. These type of rituals were not accepted by the even the Shudras, the common people, because the main reason was the animals were the ma major factor that is giving them food. They are, uh, they need animals for agricultural purpose. They need animals, they, the, their cattle to get their milk and their uh, meat and other, other type of food. Now, for each and every ritual which was strictly fixed by the Brahmins, they started asking and sacrifice for the, uh, of these animals for their own benefit. Many people, they started revolting, they started uh, refusing, they started refuse to give that uh, sacrifice whatever the Brahmin led society they were asking for. This is the time uh, where we have seen that the Janapadas were developing. Now what are Janapadas? Let us see first what are Jana. Jana means a place. Uh, some few people, those who are in a place is called as Janapadas. So these, uh, j some small Janapadas, there are many Janapadas like that. Many Jana Janas, uh, they, they, uh, they literally means that the land were set in foot where they can walk on that places that combine together to make up Janapada, Janas make Janapada and then many Janapadas like that they make a Maha Janapada. Give, let me give a very simple example like the way now we have seen villages many small villages are there now these all small villages they make a district now these many district they are making a state where we have a chief minister to rule us. 
like that even this janapadas also turn to a maha janapada the many janapadas they are making a maha janapada where a big king or the powerful king is the ruler and they are controlling the entire area there are 16 maha janapadas this time we can found that they are really powerful and they started controlling the entire north and central india and some few parts of south india here we have to remember that the northeastern part of india we have seen that there were uh, these type of controls were not there where the central and north india we have found that they were completely male dominated brahmin dominated society but this priestly system was not that prevalent in the northeast section of india uh, not only that even we have found that women dominated society in the northeastern side of india now these people this mahajanapada this uh, almost 2500 years ago we have seen that this mahajanapadas come out this mahajanapadas they have some basic distinctive feature some of them are like they all have forts the king they used to show their power by building fort now this fort is in another way saving the kingdom also mahajanapada has a capital city all the mahajanapadas they have their own capital city now whenever there is a foreign attack there is a tendency of the uh, whoever the whoever want to uh, conquer that place they always cap they need to capture the capital city so the capital capital city need to be protected by building huge fort and to build that they need many bricks and stones so naturally a uh, different type of occupation also that started de that developed in this period of time where people they are making a huge number of bricks or uh, bricks made by stones which help them to build such huge forts around the uh, Mahajanapadas. Another feature with the forts, they are digging few of the canals where they used to keep all uh, animals like crocodiles, the fierces cro crocodiles and all that when people that will try to uh, com come across that uh, canals, they will be first attacked by the crocodiles and then the fort was always protected by some of the people, some of the soldiers, some of the guard, those who are responsible to inform king and other uh, people, those who are in that administrative position, if they find someone is trying to trespass inside the fort. So, in that case, forts were, uh, it was very, it was uh, helpful to the king to protect his own capital. Nextly, we find that, uh, uh, the kings so uh, now to protect their own country the kings they need to maintain a huge army armed force that is soldiers sometimes the soldiers were paid but many a times we have seen a particular portion of the po soldiers only they were paid they were maintained throughout the year otherwise at the time of emergency at the time of anywhere we have seen that the king uh, used to hire people from the common people and pay them as they work and as uh, that way another part another major feature developed at this point of time taxes tax was mandatory for all for each and every one those who are living in the kingdom other than the dominating part like maybe for not for the brahmins not for the kshatriyas but other than these two classes, the rest classes they have to pay they were forced to pay different type of taxes the major tax was uh, collected from agriculture bhaga the king the people those who were in agriculture they need to pay a particular maybe one sixth of the production to the king as their taxes tax can be in the form of labor also if a people if a person is not uh, bear, his occupation is not agriculture maybe he is a uh, he is build he is making some of the ports ports and all so in that way or he has some other occupation in that case he is a craftsman he has to devote his service in a particular period in a month maybe weekly once like that for uh, the development of the country to the king 
so king can utilize in that way now the agricultural sector also was control started control it 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 was controlled by the wealthy people the peop even these uh, brahmins and uh, the wealthy class they have their own agricultural land which they don't they be they, they just hold the land but they don't perform the agricultural activities for that purpose they used to hire slaves they used to get their slaves and uh, the lower class people those who were responsible to work for for them for, but they have the, the the owner of the land always have the complete control on the production of agriculture whatever they produce that was uh, for the land owner and land owner used to give up a, a portion of the production to the people those who were working those who used to work was appointed to work or was forced to work in his, in his uh, agricultural field here we need to remind remember that this point of time in these kingdoms women has no power no uh, they were not uh, even allowed to uh, participate in the administrative activities or they were not even allowed to learn vedas and all women and shudras was not allowed to learn or even to chant the hymns of the vedas at this period of time this was about kingdoms now we are coming to the another sector that was uh, the another part oh here we find the change in agriculture also so the agriculture the use of iron use of iron actually given the huge change in the agriculture and to cultivate first it was whose land he will be cultivating he, he, this is his occupation now the landowner is different and the people those who are working for him for the landowner they are different though their occupation is agriculture they are only getting a part of the production not the entire production and as a uh, number of man manpower that increased as the tools iron made tools started using production also was that also developed and people got their extra time to devote for other type of activities they started thinking more they started engaging themselves in some thought building activities also we will now see major two uh, types of mahajanapadas mahajanapada 16 mahajanapadas mostly they were kingdoms kingdoms we have already discussed one of the major kingdom was magadha magadha was uh, ruled by two major ruler that one is bimbisara and ajatsatthu his son ajatsatthu ajatsatthu and bimbisara they they are it was magadha was very much important for transport for their water supply making the land fertile and the way they started ruling their territory forest also was uh, they are they, they meant to provide wood for them for building houses and carts and other um, other chariots and all besides there were the iron iron ore mines inside the kingdom inside the region so they were very much enriched with iron um, uh, in the form as a as a mineral that that it, it was a time that was it was completely ruled by iron so magadha as a owner of this place where they are getting iron they started utilizing it more effectively magadha had two powerful ruler abimbisara and ajatsatthu they actually they were really a very efficient ruler who applied all the available measures whatever the resources were available they they applied them they utilized them properly to make the overall development of the uh, of um, uh, their own kingdom uh, rajagriha in bihar was the capital of magadha for several years and then it was shifted to pataliputra which is present day patna now more than 2300 years ago a ruler named alexander the great who uh, from greek uh, from greece macedonia he came and he start he tried he conquered egypt and then the, he was on the way his dream was to conquer entire world so he came to india uh, he had a, a worse fight with puru where uh, it is said that puru was defeated 
but uh, after that defeat alexander's soldier they uh, have seen the mighty army of magadha which literally scared them even this greek historians they wrote it down that now the, the soldiers of magadha those who have co conquered egypt those who have conquered entire balochistan afghanistan before they enter indian subcontinent they conquered all those places after coming entering india they were literally scared to seeing magadha army and they decided to went back and they refused to march any further in india and from that uh, place from that place actually they uh, went back because magadha has a huge army of elephant that consists of elephant foot soldiers chariots and um, even the king was very powerful that was about magadha the kingdom now we are coming to another part that is ganas the rule by ganas there can be many kings so people of a, many of these kingdoms the small ganas they are together to rule a particular region their decision always is elective it is not selective so they don't have a particular ruler one ruler to rule rather many rulers they come to a common decision and in a democratic way they used to rule some of the places that is known as ganas vajji was a place that was ruled by ganas at that point of time here the complete scenario was different sangha gana or sangha it was not only one uh, king or one man ownership it was for all where many people they were together and they gave their decision how to make the kind of place prosperous here women have their own uh, power in their hand and the uh, this system this uh, social system that was impl implemented in the kingdoms very strictly that was also not like like that strict and that was they decide everything with it when they uh, doing a debate now uh, if they were attacked by a enemy now these people they all were together to give their decision to give their suggestions and they to give, even offer their efforts to stop the enemy during the assemblies they have regular assemblies in them in ganas we have seen a democratic way of ruling the people here people are together they are uh, frequently meeting in the public assemblies they are ready to give their own opinion their thoughts they ready to act uh, together it was not one man army kind of a thing and they followed some of the rules and regulation like present day constitution we can say that's the way it was fixed and the people are following it continuously and they respect and support each other they respect their elders they respect and support each other in the time when they need any any decision they respect others decision also mostly the elders decision both gautam buddha and mahavir they belong to this ganas or sanghas some of the most vivid descriptions uh, of sanghas we can find the life of sanghas how it was we can find uh, in uh, some of the buddhist book so here we can see that kingdoms was authoritarian where one king used to decide everything uh, but on the other side sanghas was controlled by many people in a democratic way it is it was said that ajat satu uh, the ruler of magadha once he was tried to conquer vajji uh, then uh, he sent his uh, he wanted to conquer that place so he, he sent his minister named vasaka to buddha to get his advice as i told you buddha was a part of gana so he was he was a the kingdom he held he held from a gana so he knows it very well he gave he told them that if the uh, they are meeting frequently in public assemblies they are sharing their opinions and thoughts and they followed all the established rule they, they respect their elders you cannot do anything with those ganas because they are internally protected by themselves it was not will be a right decision 
and Vajji women they were never forced or held by force and captured they were never treated as slaves or dashis. Many local shrines were maintained both in towns and villages. Many saints their different type of beliefs and thoughts were respected and even accepted by common people in the city. Around 2500 years ago we can find this type of a democratic idea even in Athens where the first world democracy the common the rule by the common people for the common people for all of for the for the betterment of the country Athens also they started a meeting in a common place and they started sharing their own ideas all elders all the adults they are the part of uh, of this type of an, uh, an assembly where they can uh, share their opinion where they can share their thought with others but remember even in Athens in this point of time women were not allowed even slaves were not allowed to give their opinion or to be a part of the assembly citizens were expected to serve in the army in the navy and that was uh, you can say spontaneously it was not that someone is forced that every week these two days you have to work for the king it was not like that rather for the betterment of the kingdom they used to work like that beside there were several thousand slaves in Athens who work in mines and fields and other place households uh, they also they uh, never treated it as well as the women I told you they never treated as uh, uh, citizens so if you compare with Athens and Vajji we can say one thing that we, so many years back even in India they, they have given that particular place to women in the democracy which Athens was failed to give even we can say that Athens is the birthplace of democracy. Thank you.